Welcome back, everybody. This is uh, part two of this Cold Wax and Oils portrait painting session, and I am ready to transfer my face to the board. And so what I've done, I decided to keep her at this size. I had contemplated on making her a little bit smaller, but instead I opted to just offset her to the right and toward the top. You can see I have like that much on the bottom and about the same amount on the left-hand side there. So to start with, what I do, this is one way that I do it, is I take a soft charcoal pencil. You could use a pastel pencil if you have one. I have a light box, but you can just put your um, paper up against a window and do the same thing because you can see through it. I go over the main lines and then I like to put in some of the shading. Just a rough outline. You just want enough charcoal, you know, where you're going to trans to transfer the line. Like I don't fill in the hair. I just like to see where some of the shading is. So that's your first step. And then I need to try to get that off because I wanted to make sure that it would transfer, that I had enough on there to show you. I'm not going to get it lined up exactly where it was. I'll try. <laughs> it was about there. Okay, then just, I have a stylus. This is actually a clay tool, but it has a big ball on one end and a smaller ball on the other end. You could use just use a um, popsicle stick would probably work. Just, you know, a wooden stick. But I just rub. It helps if you're painting. This is just a little bit tacky, but I'm not picking up any paint on my hand. So the tackiness helps for the charcoal to stick onto the surface. But having enough back there, and I, if I hold this, I can you can hear it. Kind of made a mess of that eye because I already had something down there. But it's just to give you kind of a guideline as to the position of the features. Line of her face is what's most to get the shape right. That's what's most important to me. And then just the position of the features. Let's see where we're at here. Yeah, that's pretty good. So there we go. That's that's how I start. get this in frame so then later I will decide what I want to do around her um, how much of the color I keep in her face how much I keep in the background the whole thing could change color wise um, I just kind of feel it as I go but that is probably the easiest transfer method that I that I have used now I, I do sometimes use other methods depending on um, how much time I have or just what I'm feeling for the particular subject that I'm painting but I think this is probably the easiest way because you don't need all that many tools you don't have to have a light box like I say use a window um, as long as you can see through from the front to the back of your printout you should be good but as long as you have something to look at on your board, you should be okay. You don't need like a complete drawing on here. You just need some guidelines 
to help you get started. And you don't, you know, depending on your level of confidence, if you don't want to put any of the shading on, you just want to put the line work in, that works too. Whatever, you know, you feel most comfortable doing is what will work. Um, you can see there's a little bit of paint transferred onto the paper. So we know that, you know, we're pretty dry. There's just a few places where I got a little paint picked up. Make sure that, you know, that you put your marks, your transfer charcoal or whatever on the back so that when you turn it over, you're getting the correct orientation of the face because you're going to refer to your printout or to your phone or whatever, wherever you have your reference photo in this orientation, in this, you know, with the picture face up. So on the front here, most of the shading is on the left side of her face. If I trace her here on the front and flip it over and transfer it and then try to use this, everything's going to be backwards. You probably already knew that, but in case you didn't, just something to remember. Okay, that's it. Next, we'll get to painting. Okay, I've mixed my colors and I will just tell you what I am starting with, subject to change. I have Gamblin 1980 Blush, which is this pink tone. I have an Ultramarine Blue and a Cad Yellow Pale Hue here. And then Warm White and down here Asphaltum. And then what I did was I mixed cold waxes in everything, but I started with the blush and mixed it with cold wax. And then took a little bit of that and a little bit of the ultramarine blue that was mixed with cold wax to get this cooler skin tone. Then I took a little bit of the blush and a little bit of the cad yellow to get this kind of warmer skin tone. I mixed cad yellow and the warm white to get this medium yellow, which I put in here <laughs> to warm it up a little bit. And then into the asphaltum, I mixed just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. So that's my initial palette. Like I said, it may change as we go along. I may add things, I may change it totally depending on how things are looking and coming out but let's get these out of my way that's my starting point anyway um palette knives i generally use this palette knife that has the kind of points it's more of a triangle shape here i use this one for mixing I started out with this one, but I don't really like it for applying the paint because of the marks that the little triangles tend to make um, in the cold wax. I mean, it may just be me, but that's that's this is my preferred palette knife. It's more of a teardrop shape. Notice it doesn't have the points on the sides. This I like a lot better for applying the paint, and I have this in a smaller size as well. So. I'm just going to start, um, and this is going to be a slow, methodical kind of layering process, but I'm going to start just getting some skin tone down, and I want to see and keep these colors that are in the background. I want them to come through. I don't want to totally cover them up. That's just a personal preference. I'm going just straight into the regular blush color first. And I'm just scraping from the side of my knife, just scraping the color on, picking some of it up, moving it. You can take your finger and kind of diffuse the edges if you like.
wipe your knife off occasionally, even when you're using just the same color, only because you're picking up charcoal and you don't always want to transfer that dark. And let those underneath colors work for you. Like, you know, there may be more shadow over here, so put it on and kind of scrape some of it back. And depending on which way you need to push or pull, that will depend on which, um, you know, affect which side of the knife you pick up the paint on. So like the paint is going to be on this side, this side, because I'm going up this way. It's much easier than try to contort my arm the other way. Although there are many layers to go, but a lot of this will be covered up. And, and if you don't like where you put the paint, you just scrape it off. I'm going to use a little bit of the darker over here where I know that there's more shadow. I could have even gone a little bit darker than that, but I can always come back another layer and put some shadows in there. I'm going to put a little bit more of the ultramarine blue into this kind of darker skin tone. Might even take a little bit of blue all by itself. Let it mix with the skin tone that I put down, but right along her hairline here, I you know there's shadow there. Some wax that didn't get mixed in. Note about mixing wax. Mix from all directions, like top to bottom of the pile, left to right of the pile. Scrape it up. Just make sure that you get all the wax mixed thoroughly into the paint. You, you should see your oil paint go from a really shiny look to a more matte look. So I'm just adding little bits here and then just kind of blending it into the that pink tone with my finger. You see the tiny little bit of paint that I'm picking up. And then just kind of dabbing it on. It helps to step back every once in a while too and just kind of get a overall perspective of how it's looking where you might need something else. I'm kind of constantly scraping through to expose the colors underneath. Like I feel like it's too heavy over here right now. So what I can do, okay, I have a little bit of Gamsol, which is like mineral spirits. Um, it comes in a big bottle. I just decant it into the needle nose bottle because I use it for other things. But I just put a little bit on my paper towel. I'm just going to wrap it around my finger and I'm going to just very lightly and gently dab some of this off because I'm not quite ready for it to go that dark quite yet. You can see I didn't take that much off but it does make a difference. So, 
kind of like an eraser for your oil paint. Now it's gonna add some viscosity, but not a ton only because I didn't really use that much. You don't wanna, you know, douse it. Just give yourself a little leeway. I like this blue right here, I'm gonna keep that. And the Gamsol should let me also scrape a little bit of it off. See what I'm picking up. It's just the blush color. Just start to get a little definition on the nose. Kind of see where the nose is. Sometimes you can feel like the texture's kind of working against you. Sometimes it is. <laughs> but you just keep building the layers and eventually it works out. And again, it's not intended to be, you know, a hyper-realistic portrait. This is going to be fairly abstract not totally realistic colors, but you know, a fair representation of the face for sure. texture right there that just keeps getting in my way and then that's better we'll get there I'm gonna put a little bit of blue down here looking at my reference kind of gauge where things are. Looking at the shapes of things. I'm going to start um, just getting the shape of her lips in with this blush color just because I already have it mixed up. I'll darken them up later. This eye has kind of lost its shape a little bit. When this layer is drier, I can 
come back in with my pencil if I want to with my charcoal pencil and get my definition back a little bit better if I need to, or I can just go with the paint. Okay, then we we'll start to get the neck area in. Actually, I want to get a little bit of light on her chin first. I don't want to get too precious with it. Just trying to get the lights and darks in the right places because that's what's going to give it the dimension and the depth. I worked on her face a little bit more, just establishing a little more of the lights and darks. Tried to capture the, there's a sliver of light along this side of her jaw and down the side of her neck and then just a sliver of dark on this side underneath her jaw. So I worked on getting those in a little bit, um, refined her nose just a tad and just added a little more lights and darks on her face. So um, I'm going to let that dry for a bit and I'm just going to start blocking in the hair. And this is the asphaltum with um, just a little bit of the ultramarine blue added to it. I'm not going to go for like, you know, oh, there's like strands of hair and real detailed hair. I'm just going to get the illusion of hair and work on the lights and darks where they belong a little bit, but this layer is just going to be um, getting some color blocked in, getting some shape to her hair. That's all. And again, I want to see my background colors coming through. This is a like a large expansive color, so it's a good place to just kind of let your background color shine through. You can just you know, put it on, scrape it off. If you go with a light touch, you can just get, you know, the suggestion of some strands that are hanging down. Just try to catch the top of the texture and let the color stay behind. A little darker around the face. Even if it's just here and there, not like a solid line outlining the face, but see there's a little dark there, a little dark there, a little light there. her shoulder. So we'll get a little shadow right there. Then we can kind of bring some strands of hair over. I'm not going to do too much of that detail with like the strands and everything right now because I'm not sure what I'm going to do down here for her clothing. So I'm just going to work on getting some color blocked in for her hair. And I've kind of changed her hairstyle. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> she really has her hair is kind of pulled back and then she's got these wispies hanging down. I'm just kind of bringing it all the way down as though her hair is not pulled up.
Okay, I think this is a good stopping point. Give myself a little bit of a break and let this first pass dry a little bit. I kind of actually like her hair the way it is. I love this in here. It just kind of the texture where it, the knife skimmed over that area, just leaving little bits of the brown behind. Um, just looks like highlights. I like it. Okay, I will be back after this dries a bit and we'll continue on. Okay, I've been working on this a little bit. I kind of defined her nose and her eyes a little bit. Uh, worked a little bit more on the shading on her face and her neck. So um, I did use a really small brush um, with some cold wax to go around her eyes. I wanted to get the wax over the charcoal marks. I haven't done her eyebrows yet. That's still charcoal. And kind of filled in her eyes the first pass. And I can see that I have one eye just a little bit lower than the other one. But it is what it is at this point. Um, I just wanted to come back and show you where I'm at with this. I will keep going here and come back periodically and show you my progress. Um, I'm primarily using this small um, palette knife. This is, let's see, where's the other one? This is the one that I was using before. So I'm using this one now mostly. And I have this really long skinny one that I sometimes use like to get in around the eyes before I go to the brush. I may use it to, you know, do the center line of the mouth. And then I'm still thinking about what I want to do around the edges. I could glaze part of it. Um, I could add some more stenciling, some more mark making. So once I get her mostly done, I'll have a better idea, I think. I'll keep thinking about it. So stay tuned, there will be more to come. Okay, I worked on her just a little bit more, um, filled in her lips and just kind of worked on the shading on her face a little bit. I had a little more light up on her forehead. Um, her chin was gotten, had gotten a little bit long, so I scraped back here and kind of reworked that a little bit. So let me bring you in closer so you can see how the texture works. Make sure that's in focus. Um, it just really helps, you know, to work with you. It helps you get really just cool looks like this right here. I just really love that shadow right there. That little bit of blue peeking through. There's some green coming through over here, two different greens. Um, some kind of green and blue mix right here created this shadow around this side. So the texture definitely helps. It helps me anyways. So I am going to leave her um, overnight and let this layer really set up well. It's, it's thin. You saw me. I was just putting on tiny little bits at a time. So it's not a thick layer. But um, in order to do more work on her eyes, I need what's there to dry and set up more. <laughs> 